Hello there boys and welcome to a new Blender tutorial series where in this one I'm going to be teaching you how to make NFT style abstract animation. So uh, what you're seeing on screen right now is what we're going to be making and even more so than that you have a unique opportunity <laughs> uh, to buy this as an NFT, uh, the original. So the whole idea behind this tutorial series by the way is we're going to make animations that are suited for you to kind of make your own NFTs but maybe I make a bit of money on the side, maybe not. I don't know, link in the description. So um, in this case we have a double twisted Taurus knot and it looks complicated and it looks beautiful um, but it's actually not that complicated to make its geometry nodes let's get started boys so uh, first thing to realize is this is a lot easier to make if you have the extra objects extra curves add-on you know you go to curve uh, well I guess I don't have it enabled but uh, if you do you're gonna have like Taurus knots down here and then you don't have to make it yourself so you go to add-ons you go to extra whatever you go to extra curves uh, I'm not gonna do it that way I'm gonna actually make the object um, myself and basically what this is gonna be you've seen the animation on screen and um, it's gonna be a line segment transformed into a torus that we're gonna change the thickness of add color etc uh, but we're gonna do this all in geometry nodes enough talking more doing geometry nodes uh, create a geo nodes group for the uh, cube and delete the geometry first order of business making a curve line and turning it into a torus knot so let's do that I'm gonna add in a curve line boop done and so the empire has fallen uh, you can see we have a curve line and the idea is there is some mathematical equation uh, that takes us to a torus knot what is that equation we'll look up on uh, Wikipedia and I'll, and I'll show you what that uh, ends up being so uh, yes for a lot of these there are literal equations for the XYZ components that we're gonna be using so no need to know any math we just kind of type this in so uh, with this curve what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna resample it uh, only idea behind this is we want more geometry so it's kind of like a higher resolution you know torus knot or transformation let's say there's 50 points it doesn't change anything it just adds uh, vertices to this and uh, now let's put in these equations so uh, the way we turn one into the other is you set position so again we're just turning this into a torus knot um, what position are we sending it to well we need x y and z components for the position and then we literally just type in these equations so uh, what is this t like this time variable uh, well in this case it's as we go up our uh, curve is the idea um, in other words the index or the, the vertex number so uh, wherever you see a T, I want you to think index. So first thing we do, this is super simple. Believe me. Would you believe me? Uh, take this. We're going to take a sine of it. Why? Because it's sine of T. Next, we're going to add two times sine of 2T. So uh, doing this in nodes is a bit tedious, and you have to think a bit backwards. I'm doing 2T, and then I'm taking a sine function. You basically have to think about order of operations here, because that's how you would write it out. I wish there was a way to literally just like write out the equation and then not worry about it. But you take these two you add them together. So we have sine of t plus two times the sine of 2t, and that's the x component. And then for the rest of it, you, you might think it's tedious, but literally we just copy this to go for the y component now. And the only difference is we have cosines instead of sines and a minus sign. So don't need to speed this up because I just think and do that fast. So cosine, cosine, and then instead of add, we do a minus. Finally, for the z component, again, you literally just write this out. Uh, we're going to do sine of 3t now the reason you know that we're not using this extra curves add-on and we're doing it manually is one longer view retention <laughs> uh, but also also why um because uh, if you want to copy this idea for more complicated knots or anything that has an equation publicly available and uh, now you'll know how to do it so it's a useful life skill it's like why are we using a calculator in class or why are we not using a calculator we're going to have calculators in our pocket that whole thing there's a reason for this. So I'm just connecting all of these and you're thinking, let's get this out of the way. You're thinking, wow, kind of looks like a, a geometric picture of like a uterus diagram. You know, they bring you in in fourth grade. They're like, listen, it's time for sex ed, not uterus, ovaries. I mean, whatever, whatever it is, you know. Uh, but you can see that there's kind of like the trefoil knot in here, kind of the Trinity logo kind of thing going on. But we have a lot of extra stuff going on. What's wrong? We put in the equation correctly. Uh, what's wrong is that what this equation doesn't mention is this T. In other words, the index uh, goes from 0 to 2 pi is the convention. Whereas in our, in our case, the index goes from 0 to 50 or however many vertices. Uh, so we just need to do a bit of a scaling so that we don't kind of overextend here. How do we do that? Uh, well, first, I'm going to take this and I'm going to divide. So right now it's going from 0 to 50 or whatever. So I'm going to divide by 50. Or I think technically it's going to be 49, but for now let's do 50. So now you can imagine it's going from 0 to 1 since we've scaled it down. Take it, multiply it by 2 pi. So now we've kind of remapped this. 
And you can see now we have a single trefoil knot. Now, like I said, technically it's a 49, not 50, because the indexing starts at zero, uh, but don't worry about that. Uh, this is something we also want to make a parameter for. So I'm going to make a value for our count. By the way, let's uh, save this, or we're going to be called, we're going to call this be the first to buy the NFT. <laughs> oh yes, this is. there's one reason I'm making this tutorial, and it's to teach you, but also there's NFT. So uh, we take this, we subtract by one, and now no matter what resolution we do, it's gonna be a higher resolution knot, but it's also gonna connect. Or if it doesn't, just subtract by two. Um, so let's make this 100 or 150. We can always go back and change it. So this is more of a high resolution thing. So uh, we've done step one. We've transformed a line into a trefoil knot. Um, next, we need to give this thing thickness and also do that dynamic animation looking thing. So uh, to give this thickness, we have a curve that is now shaped correctly. We need to give it thickness. So curve to mesh. So we're going to turn it into a mesh with a thickness, say it with me, a thickness of a uh, curved circle. So take it, connect it, beautiful. And we can change the radius. Now, again, uh, the whole idea behind this is we're not going to just put in a single number, but we're going to put in a function so that, you know, it looks like it's pulsating like a, a sperm traveling down the urethra. But imagine if your urethra looked like this. That means your dick looks like that. Either way, take the radius. Cool. Um, let's make it dynamic. So what we're going to do is we want it to change the radius as it goes along this. So we need some way to tell us where we are on the curve. There's a thing for this. It's called curve parameter. The factor goes from zero to one from the beginning of the curve all the way to the end. Length just gives you the length, but factor is what we want. So uh, just to demonstrate, if before we curve to mesh, we do a bit of a curve modification. So I'm gonna set radius. So every curve point has a radius, as you can see. It's just a bunch of control points. They have a position, whatever, but they have a radius and a tilt. They each have a radius as the point. So if I take this and now use the factor instead of having a constant radius, which you can see does that, if we take the factor, you can see now it's doing exactly uh, what we expect. This is the end point, so it goes very thin to very big at the beginning because it goes from zero to one, and then there's a discontinuity. Uh, but you could you could see what it's doing. So first thing, let's fix the discontinuity. So in other words, we want the endpoints to be the same. So instead of going from zero black to one white, we're going to make them both black or both white, whatever. I'm not going to judge. And uh, we're going to put white in the middle, so the Oreo method. This makes it so that where, where they connect, it's going to be the same. Let's also ease that. And uh, there we go. Now we have this. But it's not animated. There's no pulsating. Um, so what we need to do is just animate this uh, factor. So any 0 to 1 map, and I think we'll use this trick one more time One more time when we color it. But check this out. This is a cool effect in its own. There's a lot of things you can do with this. But whenever you have a 0 to 1, uh, what you can always do is you can add and then take fraction, which uh, rounds back down to a 0 to 1 interval. You could take this and then type in hash frame divided by 40. So it's going to give us the frame data, 40 times slower. This is always a trick to get a uh, periodic kind of thing. Because you took 0 to 1, you're uh, offsetting it, but then you're remapping it to 0 to 1 over time. So you can see how this is making a nice animation. Let's make it 30 frames per second. And let's make it, mm, I was going to say a bit faster, slower, but this is fine. Okay, so we've given this thing a thickness. Now it's really about kind of dressing this effect right until it looks good so uh let's talk about how to do that so uh here are a bunch of nodes that we use to make the trefoil animated knot i'm just going to bring over our time and curve parameter nodes over here and uh, for the rest i'm literally just going to take it Control g to group it just to simplify so the way i want you to think about this this is our trefoil knot group and this is our time animation thing so to make this look more complicated, very quick thing we can do is I'm just going to make another one of these. I'm going to join them. You can't really see it now, but uh, if I was to take the second one and just kind of move it over, so I'm just taking this copy and transforming it, you can see we have two copies of it. Um, a nice thing we can do is we can rotate. So it's kind of like they're interlocking. And you could try different numbers, but I found that 180 degrees. In other words, like, whoops, in other words, half a rotation. Nope, that is 18 degrees. 10 times weaker the man. Um, this gives the nicest effect because they're like exactly halfway desynced. This is one thing you can do. Also, since we have the time function exposed, we could also try offsetting the time or the curve parameter thing. Um, so here you can see I've offset it by 0.5, which is half a cycle because again, it's zero to one. So here's without. It's one kind of look. It looks great. Uh, 0.5 gives us a different kind of look. So just pick whatever you want. Um, also something I should mention 
because this is kind of the secret sauce. To make this look super cool, go to the color ramp and add in some extra stuff and you bring this super close. And now you can see this has a nice dynamic look to it. You could bring this over. You could even like add another one with the white things. So and now it has this bump and it will look even more complicated. The color ramp is where the stylizing happens, which is weird because normally that's not where it happens. But that's how you get some cool stuff. So I'm just going for a constant speed, double knot kind of situation. So the next thing we need to do is uh, we've dressed it, but we need it to like, you know, be good for render. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to basically set this up. So this will get us, you know, 90% of the way there. Uh, to get it to look perfect, you spend a bit more time than I do. Um, so, just got a text message. Doesn't matter. Uh, tutorials before texts, or a version of that. That rhymes. I'm just going to set up the camera uh, one by one uh, aspect ratio. Again, we're making NFTs here, so that seems to be convention, it seems. I'm going to go to rendered view. And I don't know if this is like a thing that's always existed uh, with EV or if it's like the newer version of Blender. Uh, but usually, we're going to pass some information from here to the shader editor. Usually you've needed um, cycles to do that, but I found that EV works here for some reason. So let me show you what I mean. Uh, I want to expose, since I want to color this like relative to where it is on the uh, trefoil knot, I want to expose the curve parameter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this node group. I'm going to add in another curve parameter node since our other one is outside the group. And I want to sample it right before we turn this into a mesh, I believe. So like right here. Uh, what I'm going to do, attribute, capture. So this is like a great way to capture attribute information um, at the time that you want it. So we want to know where it is along the curve. This will make more sense in a bit. We want to know where we are along the curve before we turn it into mesh. So while it's still curve, I'm going to take this attribute, send it here. So now it's coming outside the node group. And in fact, you know, these are two duplicate groups. So now we have this attribute, both it here and here. Um, I want to send this to the shader editor. I'm going to do a quick combination of them. Just so I don't send two attributes, I just want to send one filtered one. I'm going to take both of these, and I think I want to take the minimum. Because that way it will give us one or the other. No, it will it will give us the, the smaller of the two, uh, which happens to be what we need for this. Don't think about it too hard. You'll hurt your brain. <laughs> um, modifier, you can now see we have this input. So this is for the value. I'm just going to call this shading. And uh, let's bring this data over. So attribute, uh, we call this shading. And let's see if this works. Nope, it is uh, definitely not working. Let's see what. Let's see what's wrong here. It doesn't seem to be doing any kind of shading. Let's see. Why is it not doing? Oh, because our material isn't applied. Duh. Uh, <laughs> okay. I was going into a panic mode there. We want to set material. This is called our shading. No, it's called by the NFT. <laughs> Take the material, apply it, and now, well, now we have something. It's it's not perfect. Um, it's definitely not working, but at least we're getting the info from here to here. Um, now we just need to think about what the issue is. Is it this minimum versus maximum thing? Okay, it seems to be maximum. <laughs> Take everything I said and throw it away. Uh, you can see now we have these two curve parameters um, that I don't really know how they're intermingling, but it doesn't seem to... I don't want to think about it too hard. <laughs> uh, I think this will be fine. So you can see that this information is actually being ported into Eevee, which might be a new feature. I haven't had that work before. So... Uh, now that we have this information, we're going to use this to color it. So I'm just going to throw this through a basic color ramp. And just like before, you see we have this discontinuity from black to white. I want to make sure we get rid of that discontinuity. So I'm just going to pick a color. It doesn't matter what color, but I'm going to pick it for both of these. So I'm just copying it over. Uh, let's add some colors in between. Just shift the hue. So let's have some blue. Uh, whoops. In between here and here, let's have some, I don't know, yellow. Just pick a good color scheme, even though we'll probably change it in a bit anyways. So pick some colors that kind of match together. Eh, the red's a bit weird, but whatever. Okay, so we have the colors. I want to set this to kind of affect uh, how much it glows. So I'm going to have this be the emission. Let's see this BSDF. So now it's glowing a bit. It's more obvious when we crank this up and enable bloom. I mean, there, there it's really obvious. Um, here are some secret sauces to make this look cool. Uh, first of all, I like using Fresnel for the emission. Fresnel is giving us the view angle, but it kind of gives us a highlight around here. I like using this for the emission strength, which will make it only appear on the edges, as you can see. Uh, but then I like cranking it. So it almost looks the same, but it has more of a volumetric effect to it. So I'm going to take it, multiply it so you know we can see it. A uh, couple other things. Let's make our background metallic, or not our background, sorry. We'll make this metallic just so it catches some shine. I'm going to turn on screen space reflections just so we have more going on. 
maybe throw in a bit of clear coat. Don't know if that does anything, whatever. And finally, I like to ch change this Fresnel a bit, which will just kind of clamp our edges. Okay, so this is a good start. Uh, final set dressing. Uh, let's change the environment color to something that has a, a bit of a nice color. Um, and I think what I did for the original is I picked a color scheme, but then I did a bit of a hue shift until I liked the color combination. There we go. This gives us that nice Jimmy Neutron color. If we push it a bit more, we'll get some nice reds and stuff like that. So this isn't identical to the one I made, uh, but it's the same idea. Let's crank up the emission. Maybe crank that up and then crank up the emission. There we go. I want it nice and glowing. Okay, uh, more things to make it look good. Camera, I don't want to see the background just so I can focus on what this looks like. Um, I like taking this, and this is also kind of the secret sauce, add in a wireframe modifier, which will give us, you know, and maybe this is a, a good time to go back into geo nodes and make sure it's not too, so you can see we have a lot of geometry here. So maybe what we can do is go back into this node group. Remember, we had a value from it. So I want to bring down the geometry to, let's say, 100, because this is literally going to affect the wireframe. And then also for when we turn it into a mesh, maybe we could bring it down to 16, just so it's more readable. So the wireframe makes it look cool. But if you don't replace original, it will have the original plus the wireframe this time. It's not going to get rid of it. So you offset it by like a big number, like 10, and it will kind of, it won't be attached to it. It will be like, kind of far off you know what I mean like offset uh in that way so there we go um let's do a couple quality of life things bring down the emission so it's a bit more readable so this is where you're really just kind of playing with parameters until it looks good so I don't have the magic numbers for you I mean I do download the, you know buy the nft uh but you just want to pick some values that look pretty good um and the rest of this is just a bit of compositing and like picking colors that look a bit better. So you can see we, we get a lot of choice here. I like this like nice bit of yellowish orange. Um, I think that looks pretty cool. Uh, rendering this with some motion blur, uh, with some depth of field and really honing in the color of the background. You wanna figure out if bright or dark looks good, what color. I'm, I'm kinda gravitating to something like this. Uh, these are the results uh, that look good. But either way, uh, that's the end of this uh, NFT tutorial. You have everything you need. Now you just got to spend the 10 minutes to hone in the look. So hopefully you learned something. Again, buy the NFT. <laughs> the whole purpose of this tutorial series is it's it's twofold. It's a great way to come up with tutorial ideas that are quick. Their geometry nodes are visually appealing. But also, you know, there is the NFT. So be the first one to buy the very first NFT. There will never be another first one. No, <laughs> this is the first. So uh, thank you everybody for watching this tutorial. I hope you learned something. Uh, if you're interested in taking your viewership to the next level, is that a way to put it? That sounds manipulative. But uh, if you are, <laughs> uh, Patreon exists. You're seeing 700 some names scroll by. Uh, these people get access to a bunch of stuff. They get access to exclusive tutorials every once in a while. I haven't been too hot on that. I've been in a bit of a mood, but I'm trying to get back on it. Um, so, but the, so far every month, there's been like two or three, sometimes a tutorial series. access to that early access to tutorials, um, discord access blend file. So you can, regardless of whether or not you make this or buy the NFT, I'm going to make the blend file for this available. So you can just check it out and play with it. Um, all of this is the thing you get with, but, but also if you want to just support this channel, the CG matter channel, it is literally the most direct way you can do it without crowdfunding. I would be on the streets teaching blender to the pigeons. And maybe they learn faster than you, wouldn't they? Either way, hopefully you learned something. See ya.